around 4 billion people across the globe do not have access to clean cooking energy. 4 million people die every year from household air pollution. Today on Food Chain, we look at the impact of cooking. My name is Emma Davis. How long does it take you to set this fire? Because it's dry season, it can take me five minutes to set the fire. But when it is raining season, I can use even 30 minutes and the fire will not set off. Wow. <laughs> and you close from work at five o'clock. What work do you do? I clean in one laboratory and I serve as a registration. Oh, okay. So five o'clock, you, you are now cooking. It took you a few minutes to set fire. It's almost six. What time will you finish cooking? Maybe by eight, going to 8.30. Then everything will be set. Okay. I see. Do you have problems with the cooking with firewood? I have problems because the firewood that I'm just using is five cities that I bought it. So tomorrow when I'm to cook again, I have to buy another one here. Okay. So the firewood alone is costly. Every day I have to buy firewood. Okay. So why don't you just use only coal pots? It's the charcoal. The charcoal too, there's no charcoal. So if I'm using this one, sometimes the five city, if I use it like this, tomorrow morning I can use it to set fire and then heat water for us to bath. So in the evening when I'm to cook, I'll buy another one. But charcoal, when I use, buy five cities, I can't use it for two days. How long have you been using this? Since they gave birth to me, I met my parents with me, so I also <laughs> continue with it. So we have used it for long. Uh, do, you, do you want to move on from this someday? Uh, if we get, we have to, uh, we want to move up, uh, out of it because sometimes, especially in the rainy season like this, we can't sit outside like this and cook. We have to send it inside the veranda. Mm. But if it is cool pot, I can even send it inside the room and cook. Because we don't have a, a kitchen here, so <laughs> if not the veranda, unless the room that we used to cook. Okay, but you, you know that people die, especially women, die from air pollution, household air pollution. Doesn't that scare you? Uh, it scares me, but I have nothing to do than to use it because I have no choice than to use it. We don't have anything to use apart from the charcoal and then the firewood. <laughs> And it will take you two hours to finish a meal that could be finished in like a maximum an hour. I mean, the soup is what may take a little longer, but mm. the rice bowl should be like 30 minutes you are done. Wow. There is clean cooking energy. I mean, across the globe, we want to do things differently, advance. In a few years, we want to stop using these things. There's a, 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 an association or a company that goes about giving, a, I don't know how to put it, but a stove or something more like, but you use charcoal mm -hmm. and it doesn't give more smoke. smoke. Yeah. So would you want them <coughs> to come to you? Yes, I want them to come to me because it will help me than mm -hmm. using the firewood. But is this hygienic at all? What? No table, nothing. Yeah, it's not hygienic. But we just, because we are not, we are just used to it. We have to do it that way because we don't have table here. Nothing. When you even put table, you are sitting down. You can't use the table unless you are sitting down. So. Grandma, so after cooking, how do you keep the place? After cooking, I'll cook off the fire mm. and then I'll put the firewood together and put it here. So at tomorrow, and by that time, there will be fire inside the place. So mm -hmm. tomorrow morning, when I, ca I come out to pro uh, set fire again, the, the, all the fire will not turn to ice. So I will sweep here, collect everything, and I will set the fire again. Okay. So in case it rains on the wood, will it affect it? It will affect it because the wood, uh, the wood will be wet. Mm. And using the wet one to set fire, you won't find it easy. That was Rama, a 23-year-old whose source 
of cooking energy is firewood. Say she lives up to 70 years, what will be the health repercussions? But we find out what the Clean Cooking Alliance has been doing in Ghana so far to salvage the situation. As you start looking into kitchen, what was the difference between the different types of cooking energy or clean energy? Because this is copot. We use, I just hope it is going to work. We use what? Rubber, paper, and wood. The process even is very tedious. What are some of the reasons why you moved from using this to this? Okay. As but first of all, tell me what is this? Okay, this is Jikokwa, a modernized charcoal stove and it's um, manufactured from Kenya. Okay. This is more economical compared to our traditional coal pot. This one uses a little charcoal. Okay. The hands are insulated and this one you can regulate the airflow. Okay. So um, the way it looks like this one, you can put it on a rubber table wherever you are, even in your room you can use it and it reduces 65 percent of emission so it is very good very nice using it but how long have you been in contact with clean cooking it's almost two years now okay. actually i started the distribution of the the cocoa charcoal stove okay will, will you soon move to lpg using the gas well i've not thought of it because compared this to LPG in Ghana, I think this is more economical. Mm. The LPG is so expensive. So when I get two series or three series of charcoal, I can use it two or three times. Even four, depending on the quantity of food I'm cooking. According to WHO World Health Organization, the number of people using unclean cooking fuels are increasing, but on other continents, they are rather decreasing. Let me first ask, why is this so? Why do you think this is so? It is so. Let me talk about Ghana mm. because this is where I am. Mm -hmm. Because of the, 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 the cost of LPG. Because I think when you look at most houses, they prefer uh, LPG to the charcoal stove because they think this one, the emission is too much and it can't be used in the... Assuming, looking at where I live, I can't, I want to cook and the rain is coming. It means I have to halt everything. But with this, I can equally send it to my room and cook without any spillage, without any emission of indoor pollution. Do you get it? Aside the fact that this is very easy to use, economical, you can be able to carry it when it's raining, you can use it inside your room. What other thing did you discover from your research that makes this beneficial to this? Uh -huh. Yes, that is the health aspect. Mm. That is what motivated me to do more research about it. Because you see, looking at it, you will see that the effects of the air pollution isn't instant, but it takes a longer while. Yeah. So it means that when you get to a certain period of life where you want to enjoy life, that is where the sickness also sets in. Sure. So it means that you live your life on drugs, you live your life going for medications and consultations. So that makes me to go into it, advocate or tell people to use the improved charcoal stove, to use the modernized charcoal stove. It will help compared to our traditional charcoal stoves. I believe the end goal of the clean cooking agenda or by Clean Cooking Alliance is electric stove. What do you think about this? Yes, uh, it is true, but looking at our economic crisis mm -hmm. in Ghana, I think that wouldn't be an alternative for us because you know that LPG is very expensive in mm. Ghana. Hi, Achua. Hello, Emma. Welcome to Food Chain. Uh, Thank you. Tell us what has been the Ghana activities for clean cooking. That's interesting. Yeah. 
Where do I start? <laughs> so um, then I'm just going to have to look at the activities the Alliance and the Alliance members have been doing in Ghana since um, our inception. We'll actually be 10 years next year and um, we're looking forward to celebrate that. But in the 10 years that we've been here, we've done quite a lot of programs. We've helped um, the government of Ghana to integrate clean cooking, green economy, and climate-related information into the basic education curriculum. That was somewhere between the, um, 2015 and 2017. And it actually came into force last year. So now clean cooking is examinable and it's in our curriculum. Oh. We also went ahead to do a school kitchen program where we tried to change the stove equipment and the fuels that were used in most of the schools that were under the school feeding program into using um, cleaner technologies and cleaner fuels. And that has worked so well for us. We've done a lot of work with the local government. Um, I think for the most part of the last two years, um, we worked with the local government ministry and with um, three other assemblies, MMDAs, to integrate clean cooking into their medium term development plans. You know, it's not so easy to get government to implement programs if it is not in their plans. Mm -hmm. And once they get into their plans, you can really be sure that it will get in, uh, budgeted for and things will actually move. So we've done that with assemblies as well. We've done a lot of advocacy throughout the country. Um, we have regional representatives who, are, who continue with the advocacy activities beyond um, the central place in Accra. Unfortunately, we haven't had that much of um, um, spread because we, we are not in every region. But in the regions where we are, the adjoining regions, they over or they supervise or support activities in the other adjoining regions. So yes, we do a lot of advocacy. We do a lot of research. The Alliance is actually made up of uh, manufacturers of technologies, stove technologies, fuel technologies, retailers, distributors, individuals, research developments, NGOs, and what have you. And so our activities are a lot and touches on a number of areas. Um, presently, with support from ENI and the World Bank, we're working in the Elembele district where we are distributing about 1,500 cleaner fuels uh, and stoves to people in households. Most of our works, I should say, should have been within households. So I have two questions for, from what you just said. Okay. How much has been pumped into this initiative and are these stoves distributed freely or there is some form of um, arrangement or payment system that you know people have to comply with? Okay, so in the past, uh, previous programs, we used to give out stoves freely. In fact, I must say that at the early onset of the ENI project, we gave out stoves freely, but we had to make it a demand-driven program. So from last year to this point, we changed the face of the program a bit and asked that people actually put something towards the stove equipment that um, were given out. The initial, the first pilot was, we're just giving out biomass based stoves and they got them. But this time around, people called for cleaner technologies. So we threw LPG into the mix. And you'd be surprised that people went straight for LPG instead of going for biomass stoves. It means that the education we've been doing in the communities where we are implementing is catching on. They are actually paying for it. And these are pro-poor, highly marginalized communities. So um, we've had some kind of payment mechanism where they take the stove and pay in installments. And it's been very impressive. They are really paying for the cost of the stove. I know two women. One says she doesn't like to cook with the gas or with LPG because she's scared. So okay. she prefers cool pot and then the charcoal. And there's another who says, she has the gas, she has a cylinder, she has LPG, and yet still uses coal pot and charcoal because of affordability. 
So she uses this, she uses the the gas to cook and she uses the coal pot to probably boil water or do some other you know activities. What what is is what is the rationale behind these women's mentality and how is the the alliance you know ensuring that this is being cleared off okay thank you very much but let me first of all say that it's a very normal practice mm. um let's admit that because of experiences we've had in this country where we've seen whole tankers blowing and killing people we've seen a lot of households being set on fire because of poor handling of the lpg equipment people are naturally scared to use lpg and that is where education comes in i think that we haven't done enough education on how to use these equipments and so um, people will naturally shy away from now when you're using lpg there are some few things that you would have to think about one affordability it's a big issue especially in recent times post covid and with the russia ukraine crisis but I know how fuel prices have risen in yeah. this country. Yeah. And so you can't even begin to talk about the economies of using those um, fuels. Then the issue about safety, I've already talked about. Mm -hmm. And then even availability. Sometimes you have the money in your hands, but you can't even get the fuel yeah. to buy. Yeah. So yeah. these are teething problems that we are still working around to see how best we can address them. But when it comes to the issue about safety, I know education helps a lot. I talked about installing stoves in some school kitchens. Yeah. When we started, they didn't want to hear anything about LPG. We took them through training, series of trainings, and then we installed the equipment for them. Today, they are advocates of LPG, mm. and they have stopped using fuel wood. So yes, I know that with education, we can bridge that gap. Then the mix about the woman who is using both LPG and the biomass-based stove, the charcoal coal pots. It's also very natural especially in our part of the world. Same issues about availability and affordability. A lot of us do stuff sucking in our homes. You have your LPG, but your LPG can get finished at a time when you can't even afford to go out to get a new one. So what do you do? Naturally, you bring back the old coal pots to use. So these things are normal. And until we are able to address our affordability and availability issues, they will continue to exist. Well, to be fair, I come from a home where we use the coal pots to cook banco or <laughs> coconut tea, those, those kind of foods. Anyway, so how many have you distributed so far? Quite a lot. I'd have to rack my mind back to when we started. It's quite a lot. Each project comes with its own um, quota of source of fuels that you want to distribute. So it, if I'm speaking in terms of projects, then I may be able to come up with something. But we've done a lot of distribution. Okay, so how much has been pumped? Price. Yeah. Oh, into, into the program. Yeah. So you know that programs naturally do not just have the cost of the fuels that you or stove equipment that you are giving out. Yeah. It goes beyond that. The cost of personnel, mm -hmm. the cost of programming, advertisements. Okay, that's a rough figure, if you could give me an estimate. What click okay is it not it? It would help people appreciate the effort you're putting into this initiative and the importance of cooking clean wow <laughs> <laughs> you're pushing me to say a figure yeah well um so, okay so i can tell you that initially when we started um for example the school program had about seventeen thousand dollars the um the follow-on program had about $300,000 pumped into it. Um, I know other entities like SMV, the Dutch government, bringing in about 2 million euros, 200,000 euros, I mean, different amounts being pumped into it. So roughly, if we, like I said, I, I can't quantify because we have different programs mm. with different amounts coming in. Okay, right. there was this strategy uh, that was developed for Ghana to achieve this? How, how, how is it going? The national um, uh, strategy yeah. with which the World Bank is helping Ghana yes. to develop. Well, we are still in the process of the de uh, uh, developing that material. Um, I know that plans are far advanced to get this thing done at least by the close of this year. But I, f 
for some reasons, I can't tell exactly where we are because there are a few issues that need to be cleared out first. So, yeah, but I know that very soon that strategy will be out. And once it gets out, we'll launch it and then everybody will get to hear about the strategy. But we do not look at cooking, the importance of clean cooking. Today, I have a champion with Clean Cooking Alliance. And it is our very own Rocky Dawuni. <laughs> yes. Hi, Rocky. Hello. How are you doing today? I'm fine. Thank yes. you. And you? Um, it's a beautiful and amazing day uh, being here at the Clean Cooking Forum. Um, the second time it's come to our country. And I've had the fortitude of, uh, you know, working with this initiative since its inception. And um, I am glad that their attitude and uh, shall I say the, the, the public is getting uh, more sensitized as to the potential that lies within uh, the sector. Yeah. I'm sure the basic question will be what is clean cooking? Well, you know, the thing is that um, when you look around the world, um, many people, the larger number of people around the world, uh, they cook the traditional way. And by the traditional way, I mean that, you know, with um, you know, wood, charcoal, and um, you know, various, you know, dung, whatever they can find around. And that's how traditional food has been made for a long time. But over the years, there has been um, research that has come out that uh, when the stoves are not efficient enough, and when sometimes you burn some of this uh, biomass, mm -hmm. what happens is that there's a lot of smoke that comes out of this. And this smoke has been found to be, uh, has uh, health impacts, you know, on not only the women who are usually cooking in the kitchen, but also all the people who are around the household. And the, this, uh, cook, this um, hazard has also contributed to a large number of people who have developed certain ailments mm. or has been the inception point of certain ailments. So the idea of creating a more efficient uh, way of cooking that can use cleaner fuels and also reduce the emissions has been something that has been on the minds of a lot of um, uh, you know policymakers around the world and so the concept of clue, uh, clean cooking came forth out of that that you know making sure that the stoves that are used are you know the emission is less and its impact uh, on health is very very diminished and low and in doing so too you know it uh, also provides opportunity of not only um, you know uh, taking this right now you can't even find the firewood you know and everybody goes for charcoal and yeah. the charcoal too you have to cut the trees so finding um, a, a, a cooking uh, medium that also diminishes that impact on deforestation is also something that i feel that it's important and then the third aspect is that it also provides because everybody cooks so you can imagine how many cook stoves there are in different households so if there is a business idea that is providing a transformative opportunity to it is also a means for job creation for all the people who can be really involved in, especially the women who are involved in so i saw it as a very uh, holistic intervention into an issue that impacts the health of a lot of the people that we know. The argument would be that um, people rely on certain forms of uh, energy to cook because of accessibility and affordability. Yes, 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 yes. Could, could it be that, you know, Ghanaians have not really had access to these uh, affordable energy to, to cook? Uh, of course, you know, the thing is that um, you know, there are traditions and the way that things are done. And there are a lot of times when you have information too, there is also innovations. Mm. You know, so this is an innovation that um, is impacting a sector that, you know, at first none of us really knew there was that issue. You know, this, you walk into the kitchen, the smoke is billowing, everybody's there, you are coughing, your mm. eyes, and then you go, the food is done, you eat and you forget about it. Mm. You know, but once you start getting more informed and seeing that there is a certain cost to that and the cost is not only happening to 
uh, a custard salsa. It's the people you love, the people who are close to the kitchen, our mothers, our yeah. sisters who are doing that. Then that means that we have to figure out ways to also, um, you know, do the adjustment and then take advantage of the advances in technology that can help us also bring new uh, technologies that can help us be able to, re you know, diminish, you know, that type of impact. But then affordability too is a whole thing. So that's why there is the need for uh, governments and policymakers to be involved in, in terms of scaling this approach. And then uh, also individuals, uh, private sector also getting involved in so that we can be able to create a, a market for it. And through the market too, that can be able to bring down uh, cost and prices uh, for it to be affordable and mass. This brings me to my point. Yesterday, Samira Baumi, the second lady, made a call for investments, you know, public-private investment to ensure that this is accessible. We know Rocky Dawuni as a musician. Yes. What is your role with clean cooking? Is it that you love cooking? Well, first of all, I love cooking uh, myself. I, you know, when I was growing up, mm. you know, my father, although he was in the army, cooking was his thing. And so my whole family, all the men cook. I'm vegetarian too, so I had to learn how to cook for myself. And then um, at the same time too, um, you know, I also saw this too as an opportunity too for countries like mine. You know, we're working on job creation. So there's the need for new ideas that will kind of be able to change the paradigm and also put us also on the cusp of emerging um, you know, uh, business concepts and emerging uh, opportunities that, first of all, will have social transformation, health benefits, and at the same time to equip the youth, you know, with certain skill sets that will help them compete in today's world. And I felt that as a musician who, when this idea was first uh, incubated, um, I was invited by uh, Secretary Hillary Clinton uh, myself, Julia Roberts, and Jose Andres were some of the first ambassadors that were invited. And I saw this as something that, for me, first of all, the environmental issue was key to me because I was seeing how trees were being cut, even in my own neighborhood, yeah. in my village. You know, people will go trees that are every two places that used to be forested, they're all being cut. The women will have to, a lot of time, travel long distances, you know, to go carry firewood and all of that just to come and make their daily food. And then there was also, um, once I discovered the, the health issues too, I felt that as somebody who is interested in the society and also interested in uh, the uh, bringing to light, issues that I feel affect my community. This was an opportunity to lend my voice to an idea that I felt impacted so many different sectors. You know, it impacted health, it impacted livelihoods, it impacted uh, women's rights, and also uh, the opportunity to create jobs. Yeah. You know, so to champion it and bring the attention to my country and also have my country become uh, partners to this emerging or shall I say this hugely and fast growing sector I felt it was something that was a responsibility of mine so that's why I have been a champion of it and I continue to be a champion of it till today. Okay. Thank you Rocky Downey for making time uh, like you said clean cooking is conversation that needs to be expanded yes. and uh, our leaders need to take more initiatives to help this program or this idea yes. be established in our communities. Thank you for watching Food Chain. My name is Emma Davis. Mm -hmm.